When you want to do I.O. operations with a block device like the hard disk, you typically specify the file handle with which you are going to do I.O. The address of some buffer, typically a, a variable name like a string or an array or whatever, uh, from which or to which you are going to do the I.O. operation and the number of bytes to be transferred. At that point, the operating system may take one of the two approaches. One of these approaches is uh, the operating system uh, might transfer the data from the uh, device or the device controller uh, directly into the user's address space. That means directly into your variable, into your, for example, string. The second option is uh, the operating system transfers the information not into the user space but into kernel space some buffer of the kernel and then copies it from the uh, buffer of the kernel into the user space into your variable now both uh, options have their pros and cons in the case of the first option where you're transferring from the device directly into user space you have the following problem remember that when you want to do such an IO operation since it's a blocking operation your process will switch uh, into the waiting state uh, until the IO operation is complete during that time if the system is running out of memory space the pager may decide to page out uh, the memory page of the process where that variable uh, is stored. Now, if you if the pager pages out that page, the the I/O device will still try to write into the page into the uh, specific uh, memory frame which contains that page. But unfortunately, it's not that page anymore. That page has been selected as the victim, it has been paged out, and now there is the page of another process there. Of course, this would cause a lot of problems. To avoid this, for example, you typically lock that page into memory, which means you tell the pager not to page out this uh, frame, because the page in that frame is in the process of data transfer. Of course, this also limits the number of uh, pages that can be selected as the victim, so it uh, puts some pressure on the memory management of the operating system. Uh, the good side of this is when I.O. is done, you have your variable uh, in the... Uh, you have uh, the data in your variable, so it's a fast process. The alternative approach in which the data is not directly transferred into the user space, but first it's transferred into kernel space and later from the kernel space into the user space. In that case, first of all, that copying from the kernel space into the user space is done inside the memory. So it is faster compared to uh, doing uh, reading it from the disk but anyways before earlier uh, you have uh, to do that transfer from the disk at least into the kernel space so it is actually two copy operations one with the disk and the second inside the memory so this is a little bit slower and also it consumes double space because you store the same data both in the kernel buffers and also in user space However, it also has some advantages. First of all, you don't need to lock that page. Uh, while the page is in waiting state, if you need the pages of that process, which is in waiting state, you can safely page them out because the disk I.O. is not being done directly into the user space. The second advantage is, for example, if there is some other process that also wants to read the same block from that file. Since 
a copy of that is currently inside the kernel space, you don't need to go to the disk once again. You already have that data in the kernel buffers. So the kernel can immediately, in a very fast manner, copy that uh, data directly into the uh, other processes, other space, without doing real physical I.O. with the disk. So it would be faster in that case, especially if uh, several files or several processes, sorry, several processes uh, want to read the same data uh, from the files. Uh, so each process, uh, each approach, as I said, has pros and cons. Now that second approach is what we call as memory mapped I.O. Because actually you're mapping some part of the disk into the kernel buffers, into the memory. So that file uh, is all, uh, the, that file content, the part, that part is already in the memory. So the memory map file I.O. allows the file I.O. to be treated as routine memory access because that data is already in the memory by mapping the disk block, that specific disk block, to a page in memory. Uh, the file is initially read using demand paging, so uh, it's not immediately brought into memory. Uh, it is uh, brought, that uh, block of that file is brought into memory when there is a demand. That's why we call it demand paging, remember. So what you're reading from the disk is of the same size as the page, because you're going to read uh, one page directly and subsequent read or write operations with this file are treated as ordinary memory access, so it's faster. That means, for example, if you want to read, say, 100 bytes from, uh, let's uh, say, a 4 kilobyte, uh, or let me correct it, let me put it this way. Assume that you have the page size as 4 kilobytes. That means, the read-write operations with the block device will be uh, done in terms uh, in multiples of four kilobytes, because you will be reading uh, as the same size as the page. So you would be reading four kilobytes of uh, data. But in fact, in the read statement, you have said read from this file handle into this string, read hundred bytes. You didn't want four kilobytes. You only want hundred bytes still the operating system will bring the page that contains those 100 bytes, but the page itself is 4 kilobytes. So in other words, the operating system will be reading 4 kilobytes into the buffer. And then when you try to read, it will give you 100 bytes out of that 4 kilobytes. So in the subsequent read operation, that means if you want to read the next 100 bytes, it doesn't need to go to the disk because that part, the following 100 bytes, is also in the same page. So the subsequent read operations or write operations will be faster because that data is already in the buffers. Now, if you keep on reading this way and you've reached the end of the page uh, in the uh, kernel buffers, and you still want to keep on reading, that means, you, again, uh, the operating system again has to read another four kilobytes from the disk, bring again to the buffer, and then you will again using it, let's say, 100 bytes by 100 bytes. Uh, so this approach also simplifies and speeds up file access using the uh, read-write operations, actually. Uh, th now the read-write system calls are not directly working with the uh, device, but they're working through the uh, kernel buffers. Uh, the one important question you need to answer is, okay, you, you say, I'm writing to the file. Actually, you're not writing to the file. You're writing in the buffer in memory. That's important. You're not directly writing into the file, but when you say write, actually it's writing into the uh, buffer in the memory. Nothing is happening on the disk. 
Now, when does that uh, when is that data in the kernel buffer really written into the uh, file on the disk? This can be done, for example, when you say close, because when you say when you close a file, actually you say I don't need this information anymore. I'm not going to work with this file anymore. So now the operating system may uh, release those buffers and before releasing the buffers it has to copy that information in the buffers into the uh, onto the disk okay so it would be definitely written when you say close uh, in the case of using streams for files you also have the option of for example saying flash which will force the write operation or a better approach is the pager periodically checks for dirty uh, bits of the pages so when it finds that buffer the page that contains that buffer marked as dirty and if the this device is just sitting idle without telling the user the kernel can copy uh, that content into the file so that later when you want to uh, for example close the file the close operation would be much faster because you don't need to uh, write to the file uh, once again because it's already written uh, in some operating systems uh, the map, map, uh, map memory map uh, files is the standard for IO operations. Uh, the processes, if they want to make use of memory uh, mapping, then they can use the MMAP system call for memory maps IO operations. And uh, open, read, write, close typically make use of MMAP. Uh, the copies are still both in the kernel uh, and the user space and uh, copy it as I explained. Uh, you can make use of copy on write uh, to, uh, for reading and writing from non-shared uh, pages and also memory map files can be used for shared memory uh, easily uh, although this will still uh, require some uh, separate system calls. So if, for example, for the case of uh, making use of shared memory, uh, let's say we have two processes, A and B. From the point of view of process A, it appears like all of these uh, pages are actually in the process's address space, uh, consequently, uh, one after another, placed here as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? As you can see in this figure, these six pages are close to the bottom, close to the end of the process's address space. Whereas from the uh, point of view of process B, for example, they could be uh, all the way up. In other words, actually, the processes may consider these pages to be in any part of their own address spaces. In reality, it's not stored here or there. It's stored in the physical memory in, of course, random frames since we're talking about paging they can be stored in random frames in any order but it's just the links through the page tables will consider them uh, to be uh, in the specified order in the specific places uh, and uh, these memory frames are fed from the actual disk blocks on the disk. Uh, this is for uh, memory mapped files, like two processes are sharing a file. If you want to share the memory, it is similar, but this time you don't have the disk because you're not uh, dealing with a file. Uh, so it could be used for both shared memory and for shared files. Note that once again, in the case of shared files, in the memory actually you're keeping a single copy in the uh, kernel buffers.
These are the kernel buffers. These 1, 2, 3, 4 inside the physical memory are the kernel buffers.